in the previous lecture we prepared our SD card isn't it in this lecture let's boot the BeagleBone hardware using the micro SD card interface these are the steps you have to follow first of all make sure that your BeagleBone is not powered up if you have connected it to the PC please remove it and after that connect the serial debug cable between uh, BeagleBone black and host this is actually optional step but if you have that cable then it's better to connect that because by using that we can observe the early boot messages of the kernel that is you have to use this cable to establish a serial connection just connect this end to BeagleBone serial port pins and this end to your PC After that, insert the SD card to BeagleBone. And after that, give the power to the board using mini USB cable. Just give the power. And when you give the power, what happens? The board boots by using the images which is there in the EMMC, remember. Let it boot, no problem. That's the default boot. Let it boot. Then what you do is, Press and hold the boot button, that is S2. After that, press and hold the power button, S3, until the blue LED turns off and turns on again. If blue LED doesn't turn on, gently press the power button. That means you are doing a power down of the board by pressing the S3. Then gently press the power button. When you do that, the board powers up again. After around 2 to 5 seconds, you release the S2 button. That's how you change the boot sequence. In this case, the board will boot from the micro SD card. Let's do these steps. First of all, let me open the command prompt. And I have connected my serial debug connection. Just run the command D message. Here you see some logs which is related to our USB serial converter. That is the cable what we connected for our serial debug connection. It shows that the converter is detected. In my case, the converter is this one. If you just Google this, so basically it's a USB to TTL converter chipset from Prolific Technology. If you are using uh, some different cable, then the chip may be different. It could be from FTDI or it could be from some other manufacturer. In that case, it would show some other vendor here. That's not an issue. But you should see something like this. The converter is attached to a device file that is TTY USB 0 or TTY USB 1, something like that. That means we are going to establish the serial debug connection over TTY USB 0. So that means the host is going to communicate with the board over serial communication over this device file that is TTY USB 0. You should see something similar. And after that, let's use Minicom to observe the serial data. For that, just run sudo minicom s. After that, go to serial port setup here. And here, press the key A. And here you can change whether it could be TTY USB 0, USB 1, or 2, or something like that. So in my case, it is USB 0. Then type enter to exit from here. Enter. After that, if you want to change the baud rate, that is BPS, you can press the key E. And from here, you can select the bits per second, parity, and data, or something like that. For example, if I want to change the baud rate to 9600, then I would just press the key C. You can see that the baud rate got changed. But we are going to use 115200, that's why I would press the key E. Hit enter to exit this. 
and after that make sure that hardware flow control no and software flow control no if you want to make yes then you should type that letter for example if i want to enable the hardware flow control then i would press the key f it becomes yes but in our case it should be no so i would press the key f again to make it no this should be your setting and then press enter to exit this menu after that go to this option save setup as default and press enter after that exit we are in the minicom now minicom is a serial port application in order to trace the messages which are coming over serial interface if you want to exit from the minicom application it is very simple you have to press control a just press control a and after that x you can leave the minicom like this so i would press no here if i press yes what happens the minicom terminate and if you want to again open the minicom then either you use sudo minicom minus s or just sudo minicom because you have already saved the setup as default that's why I just type sudo minicom for the next time let's do these steps insert the sd card to the bbb and give power to the board using mini usb cable let me do that let me give power to the board now you are seeing some boot messages here so you may see something like this or you may not see something like this it doesn't matter what you see here go to the next step the next step is very important you have to press and hold the boot button and then press and hold the power button until the blue LED turns off and turns on again and once the blue LED turns on again release the S2 button after 2 to 5 seconds let's do that I am now press and holding the S2 button and now I am long pressing the S3 button I am waiting for the power down you can see that it started booting now leave the S2 button you can see that the board is booting from the SD card we got the BeagleBone login the board has successfully booted from the SD card interface and this is a login name and this is a password let's type Debian and the password is temp pwd we successfully logged in into our BeagleBone Black hardware just run uname minus r and you should see this number this is from the pre-built image of what we have used 4.4.62 so you also should see the same number because you also booted from the pre-built images which I have given to you right we have to do one important step here to boot from the SD card we played with the buttons like S2 and S3 but that's a tedious process let's skip doing that but still our board should boot from the SD card for that let's do one small hack what we can do is let the board use this uh, default boot sequence no problem first it checks MMC1 and then it goes to the MMC0 here what we can do is in the EMMC let's do some changes to the boot images let's invalidate the boot images if you do that the board first checks for the EMMC and it fails because we have invalidated the boot images that's why the next source in the boot order is SD card that's why the board will boot from the SD card that means we have to do some changes to the EMMC memory if you do this then we need not to play with 
S2 and S3 button. So you just give power to the board, it boots from the SD card. Let's do that. Just follow what I do now. Go to the command prompt and make sure that you logged in into the BeagleBone. Create one mount point because we have to mount the EMMC partition now. Just first type the command sudo minus s, enter the password temp pwd, and create one folder in media folder. Let me call it as temp1. This is the mount point. Now to mount the partition, you have to use the command mount. Mount. The partition is dev mmc block 1. mmc block 1 p1. Why? Because as I explained before, mmc1 interface is for emmc and mmc0 interface is for micro SD card. That's why you have to use mmc block 1 p1 partition 1. This is MMC block 1 partition 2. This is a boot partition of the EMMC. And the mount point is what we created media temp 1. We throw some error or some warning, that's okay. Let's get into the mount point media temp 1. These are the boot images of EMMC, remember that. Here, just change the name of this MLO. Use the move command, change MLO to MLO dot backup, something like that. We just alter this name. You can always go back and you can fix this to MLO later. Now what happens? When you do a default boot, the board first checks for the EMMC. It first checks for the file called MLO. Since MLO is not present here, it goes to the next boot source in the boot order. And the next one is SD card. We just changed this name, that's it. And after that, you have to execute the command sync. After that, you have to shut down minus H now. The board will be powered down. So you can see that your board went to power down mode. Just press the power button. That's it. Or you can remove the cable from the PC and connect it back. So I would do that. I would just remove the USB cable from the PC and I connect it back. Now you can see that you need not to press any S2 or S3, it boots from the SD card. That's great. Alright, so if you are using, um, you know, newer EMMC uh, flasher image on the EMMC uh, memory of the BeagleBone Black hardware, then uh, you don't see two partitions of the EMMC. For example, if I just run the command lsblk here, now you see here MMC blk0, this is nothing but your SD card, okay, which has got two partitions, P1 and P2. And this is the onboard embedded MMC, okay, EMMC. The newer EMMC flash images of beagleboard.org it actually creates uh, only one partition here, MMC BLK1, P1, okay, you don't see P2. And you cannot locate the MLO uh, in this uh, partition. Let me mount that, okay, mount dev MMC BLK1, P1, let's mount to some mount point. And here if you go inside boot, okay, you don't see MLO here. That's because the newer EMMC flasher Debian images of uh, BeagleBoard.org, it actually creates only one partition, okay, MMC BLK1P1. And this is of type uh, EXT4. 
and it doesn't copy the boot images such as MLO and U-boot into this partition. So it actually creates one MB of MBR master boot record. So and it stores the MLO and U-boot uh, into this MBR. Actually, there is no file system on this MBR. You cannot mount this. Okay, these MLO and U-boot are hard coded uh, onto this MBR. And now, if you want to force your uh, BeagleBone hardware to boot from SD card by default, then you have to uh, erase this MBR. Okay, so don't worry, you can recover it later, no problem. I will uh, teach you how to do that. Now we are going to erase this MBR. Let's get back to the BeagleBone. So go to the BeagleBone command prompt here. And let's first unmount this partition okay let's use the dd command to first take the snapshot of the mbr uh, let's save that into some file okay so because we want it later to recover it so that's why i'm going to use the dd command input file is equal to dev mmc blk1 and the output file is equal to let me call it as emmc boot.img so from here we are copying some data that is mbr into this file okay this, this is a local file and the block size is equal to 1 mb we are copying and count is equal to one time right hit enter all right so now you see here uh, this file gets created which has the snapshot of the mbr so now we are going to zero out the MBR. And let's again use the DD command DT input file is equal to dev zero output file is equal to dev MMC block one. Okay. And BS is equal to one megabytes count is equal to one. You zeroed out the MBR. Now let's test this. So what you do is uh, remove the power from the BeagleBone black hardware. Okay, you just disconnect the USB cable from your computer. I'm going to do that. Okay, I just disconnected the power and after that connect the USB cable back to your computer to give power to your board. Okay, right. So now here it is. Now you see here. Now you can see that the board is booting from SD card okay it is not trying to boot from the EMMC so this way you can force your BeagleBone black hardware to boot from SD card by default whenever you give power to the board now let's see how to recover the MBR so let me just log in all right so I'm again going to use the DD command input file okay the input file will be EMMC boot.img so what we saved earlier okay and uh, output file is equal to dev mmc blk1 and bs is equal to one megabytes count is equal to one so we just recovered the mbr now let's test this okay all right so now just remove power from your uh, beaglebone black hardware by disconnecting the usb cable and connect it back right here it is now it is booting from the EMMC. All right, so that's how you can force your board to boot from SD card by default whenever you give a power to the board. Okay. So throughout this course, we'll be using uh, SD card boot. Okay, so we'll not be using any contents of the EMMC. All right, so I hope you can reproduce this at your desk, and I'll see you in the next lecture.